Hi, Susan. How are you? Hi, I'm good. Thanks. How are you? I'm good. Thank you. And thank you so much for joining us. Uh, for all our audience, you know, I'm going to let Susan uh, allow herself to explain uh, what she's doing, the organization she's working in, and we're going to have a fantastic conversation, hopefully. So, Susan, thanks again for uh, coming online today. My pleasure. Um, so I'm Susan Walsh. I am the classification guru. That's my business. I founded that three years ago and I'm a fixer of dirty data, um, which, you know, to anyone in the data world, that doesn't really mean much, but to people who are not in the data world, it's something easy and relatable to understand. And my specialism is spend data classification, supplier normalization and taxonomy customization. So I work a lot with procurement departments and classify their financial data. Um, and from that, they can make cost savings, they can look for rogue spend, they can look for um, opportunities to rationalize their supplier base. Um, lots of good stuff like that. So, so that is, that's basically what I do. And it's been a, a, a bit of a ride over the last three years, but it's been fun. Wow, that's really amazing. So classification of data, can you give me some like concrete examples on how yeah, you do yeah. that? Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, if you're working in an organization now, I bet that someone in the office is buying stationery. So, and that supplier might be Staples, for example. So every time you buy something from Staples, you get an invoice. And in that invoice description, there will be things like pens, pencil, paper, elastic bands, all that kind of stuff. So in a spreadsheet form, that would be supplier, would be Staples. Then you'd have your descriptions of pen, pencil, paper. I would then either take an existing taxonomy, maybe like the UNS PSC or uh, build a customized one for the client and level one might be say facilities level mm -hmm. two might be office supplies level three would be then be maybe writing instruments paper and um, desk supplies and then you might even go to level four which would be different types of paper different types of pens and pencils um, and then desk supplies could be things like paper clips, elastic bands, files, all that kind of stuff. So you can get some real detail um, from your existing data. So when you roll that up um, to, to and classify all the whole file, you can then see, right, well, at level one, we're spending this much on facilities, we're spending this much on IT, we're spending this much on professional services, this much on travel. And then if you want to dig a little bit deeper, you can then start going, okay, oh, we're spending uh, 50 million on office supplies with 500 suppliers. You know, if that's a global company, that could easily happen. It's like, well, yeah. actually, we should probably be negotiating some better rates here and losing some of those suppliers. So it's it's giving them telling them a story and giving them information that they didn't know they had if that makes yeah. sense yeah no it totally does wow uh, that's totally amazing and are you seeing like a lot of um data quality issues while you're doing those classifications so this is, is that the part whole, of the job as well the whole reason <laughs> i started my business so right. before this i worked for a spend analytics company and you know everyone was paying you know lots of money not just with them but other companies too on these amazing sexy dashboards uh, to give them all these analytics but actually every single data set that came through the door was an absolute mess and and to me i thought well this doesn't make sense because the most important thing is the data you know you can have the best dashboard in the world but if your data behind it is wrong it's going to be meaningless and and nobody seemed to be focusing on that bit that's the bit that's kind of swept under the carpet yeah so i kind of after you know five years i was like right i can't i, I really love what i do but i want to change and you know, I didn't come from a data or a procurement background. So I didn't know that there were other jobs like that out there. So I thought, well, I'll just set up my own business and do it. So, so that's kind of how that all 
Wow, that's amazing. <laughs> that's amazing. Wow. Uh, and yeah, I was actually wondering, like, um, you know, people who are trying to start, a, um, you know, their own company right now, especially in the data space, um, how would you advise them looking back on your own journey? How would you advise them to, to go about their pursuits of, of a new business here? Uh, the first thing I would say is you need way more money than you think you do. So what, however much you've got, double it and that will see you through. Getting new clients can take a very long time depending on what you're doing. So uh, I'm very much a, a problem-based solution. So people aren't going to just uh, instantly purchase me. They're going to see me, realize they've got a problem and then think about using me. We might talk for a few months and then something might happen. So depend, you know, or you might be selling a product in which case it's going to be different, but it might take a little while for it to get off the ground. So you have to plan for those kind of things. Um, you know, it's going to be challenging. You know, it's going to be really, really tough at times. And then on the flip side, it's going to be the most amazing feeling you've ever had at other times, you know, when you get that first win or you know you you made it through another year of business and you can't believe it and you know you've been through the struggles um and I think you, you really have to do something that you love like you live sleep eat breathe um your business there's no off switch so you really do have to love what you're doing uh, I would I would say anyway yeah, no, definitely. Uh, and that's so important to, um, you know, people always try to uh, try to think that, oh, you have to find that sweet mix between passion and what actually is out there. What's a, what's a problem that I can solve? Well, uh, yeah. What's your on that? Yeah, I think that that is also true. So, you know, there might already be a lot of people doing what you want to do. So find a different angle be a little bit different. So um, within my space, actually, nobody was doing it. So when, when I said I was going to do this, everyone was like, okay, then. You know, I, I, knew, I, knew, I knew they thought it wasn't going to, you know, probably wasn't going to come to anything. But I, I really felt like there was a real opportunity and, and what, you know, speaking to people within the industry, you know, they seemed interested. So I thought, you know, that's good. But, but you know, it's not good enough to just provide a service, you know, you have to be a bit different. So I kind of built a, a presence and a personality online, you know, so I, I talk about data in a fun way, you know, I'm not, I wouldn't say I'm a very, well, I'm definitely not a corporate person. So I don't, and I don't talk in technical terms. I talk in terms that anybody off the street could understand what I'm talking about. So that's my difference. Yeah. Um, you know, there will be, better people than me out there doing what I do, but I don't know where they are because you know, there's nobody really actively talking about this like, like I am, I don't think. So, um, so yeah, find your, your little diff point of difference and, and really own that and, and nurture it and, and yeah. <laughs> that yeah, those are some great, great advice. Thanks, Susan. Um, like within your, um, the, the companies or the projects that you deal with right now, how yeah. have you seen these companies uh, navigate the current pandemic situation? Have you seen like projects been halted or they're like postponed or, or you know, how? how yeah, I how think, they're... yeah, things are just taking a lot longer to happen because um, the clients are so busy with other things or they're firefighting. Um, and, you know, data is not, the most important thing right now it's getting ppe to to whoever they need to get it to or it's um trying to keep the business alive because all your venues have shut down and you have no source of income now mm -hmm. so yeah it's you have to manage that but at the, at the same time there's other businesses where it's gone quiet and they've had time to look at what they need and they've then come to me and, and I've helped them out so you know I've, I've had new clients through this and then some have just kind of you know been postponed for a wee bit so uh, it, yeah I think within data I think there's definitely opportunities not not in every industry but data absolutely yeah no I I, I resonate that with you and and we're seeing the same in 
my day job, you know, where, yeah. where a lot of current ongoing projects, they are either they're postponed a little bit, but very few are uh, very few unless they're in, let's say, the critical industries, which are, let's say, the airlines industry or um, um, kind of like the, you know, energy industry, for example. Yeah as they're in those industries which are highly affected by the shutdown of, uh, you know, the yeah. lockdown and everything. I think the data projects are still going on. Data is still valuable, um, you know, and, and there will always be opportunities, like you say, um, uh, within that domain. I think with, especially if you want to find cost savings, data will, will show you that, you know, but it might not be in the right state just yet. So getting it into a position where you can use it to make cost savings might be, you know, a priority. Absolutely. No, I think that's the cost saving bit is what will stick around in most of the projects and especially regarding data quality, data classification, understanding the taxonomy of, of the current data sets that you hold. People are um, going to start understanding terms that, that were only known amongst us data people, you know, taxonomies and deduplication and all that kind of stuff. It's, but going to come wider terminology. That's so true. And, you know, I was also kind of wondering, um, you know, all the data that's coming out from uh, World Health Organization or, or COVID. And I recently actually had a chat to uh, Peggy Sai, who is the VP of Big yeah. ID. She actually posted a very interesting blog post about how important it is to even govern these data sets that oh. WHO and, and John Hopkins University and they are, you know, come, uh, churning out because we are relying on these facts to do research. We are relying on these facts to understand how the trends are going and eventually find hopefully uh, some kind of a resolution, whether it's a policy, whether it's, um, you know, the, 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 the rules or whether yeah. it's vaccinations and so on. Um, so totally, totally get that. Um, yeah. I've, I've actually asked this question to a lot of my uh, interviews as well and wanted to ask you the same. Um, so, so in terms of the pandemic situation, you know, a lot of uh, companies, customers, clients, and clients included, they are doing um, their community some sort of, um, let's say they're, they're doing something for their community in terms of the data world. Um, uh, you know, have you seen something within your organization that is similar? So a contribution uh, to the data world during this pandemic or, um, you know, any advice that you have for people who would like to contribute? Um, so I think it's, it's hard. Um, I have felt at times like, you know, I've offered my services if I could help, you know, with classification, but you know, when, when everyone was rushing to get PP out, it just, it just didn't feel like it was enough. Um, I tried to uh, um, speak to people who are looking to get into the data world and help them and give them advice or maybe once, twice a week I'll speak to someone and just um, answer their questions, you know, people who are maybe have been in the data industry for a long time but want to set up their own business so I, I give time in that way and that's, that's the kind of way I feel I can give back. Um, there's a, a procurement group I'm in and I've offered uh, some free training to the group. So it, it's things like that, that, you know, it's, it's not much, but it's, it's my contribution. So that's, that's even a lot. Any bit counts, Susan. So yeah. thank you so much for your contributions. And I'm very so, grateful for, for people like you. And, uh, you know, so far all of the interviews that I've uh, done and their contributions as well. So, so thank you everyone. Um, now, I, I know you, you reached, just touched on the topic um, of when, you know, when people have been laid off, uh, you know, you're, you're, you're probably communicating with, with some of them. Yeah. Um, how, what would you advise for people who currently don't have a job, but they're actually looking for a job in the data world, uh, given the current situations and maybe there are severe um, restrictions from the HR hiring side of things as well? Yeah. So I would say, first of all, don't jump into just an, the next job. Um, I know it's hard when you're worried about money and, you know, having, having my own business, there's been months when I've had no income. So I know what that's like, but, you know, take a step back, you know, if you can give yourself a little bit of time just to um, reset yourself and refresh yourself. And then, you know, there's a, a, lo a lot of different options. So, you know, don't wait for jobs to be advertised. If there's a company that you know you really want to work at, you know, 
go and go find those people through LinkedIn and just have a chat with them and find out if there's any opportunities or, you know, it's, it, it won't give you um, a massive income, but there's, you know, lots of work on freelancer websites. You know, you could get some really good experience doing some really cheap data jobs on a freelancer website. You know, it would just, you know, get you, get you some experience, get your toe in the water, you know, keep you busy. Um, but the worst thing you can do, um, and I'm speaking from experience here, is jump into a job just because you need one because you'll be miserable within a few months and, yeah, you won't be happy. So that, that would be my advice. Yeah, no, totally. I remember uh, back in my early days, I was in a, in a company where um, I wouldn't say where because that would give it away, but <laughs> yeah. I was <laughs> basically uh, in a company where I was actually not that happy for a couple of years and uh, you know it was just a mundane everyday everyday data job data yeah. entry job say um, and I remember not giving enough and all of a sudden you know I'm I'm, I'm focusing a lot on the outside things so I started yeah. getting involved in startups and so on and one day, one day, one of my bosses, they actually, uh, he actually visited that startup fair that I was organizing and he was totally surprised. He said, Shama, you're not the same person that I saw back in the office, you know, yeah. bring yeah. that vibe to back to the office. So yeah, yeah. I totally resonate with you. Um, one on, thing I'd say is you don't, you don't realize how much it kind of sucks the life out of you so you you kind of go into survival mode so um and you know when I've been in those jobs and when I've left it's like you know and then I'm like yes I could be happy again you know you don't you don't realize yeah yeah no absolutely I totally agree now um coming back to a little bit serious topic uh you know I've I've been looking at different kinds of data trends over the last few years, but I would love to have a little bit of insight from you, especially from your domain of work. Uh, what yeah. trends have you seen in the last few so, years? So the, there's definitely a, a focus within like AI classification, but, but it's a, it's not really there. There's a, there's a lot of human intervention that, that people don't really know about. Um, and yeah, I'm I'm the opposite in coming out and saying, hey, I manually classify your first data set because it has to be done by a human. Um, and, and I think there's a, a huge talk now around data quality, data accuracy. And um, that is a big conversation, um, not just within procurement, but master data. You know, people are definitely talking about it more, but it's still, we still have a way to go before we get the decision makers to get on board with it. So. That's yeah. the next project for me. <laughs> get their attention. That that's excellent, and good luck with that. Well, um, Susan, I, I know this was a really really nice talk talking to you and getting your insights, and especially your your uh, journey to you know how you became a founder and the difficulties you faced in in your business and how how to potentially avoid them as well. Um, so thank you so much for sharing your insights. I, I really pleasure. appreciate you, com uh, you coming online today. Thank you very much. Thank you.